Welcome to Chapter 3 Review of Index New Testament, Volume 14, Part 3. I mean, Chapter 3, whatever. <laughs> so, this chapter, sorry if I felt like I was rushing a little bit last chapter. I didn't really want to... Well, because my folks were gone and they were going to be back any minute, so I kind of had to rush it out. Sorry if I forgot the whole Thomas seeing the nasty flesh chest thing and he about Patricia eating it and Thomas barfing and oh that's her if I forgot that and if anything else I forgot either but this chapter not so much I have plenty of time to review this right now so yeah so this chapter I really want to discuss I really really do because it's just like in the middle of it it's kind of lengthy dialogue and all that so the beginning is basically um Toma just and, uh, fanning over what to eat for dinner and all that, because they haven't eaten for the whole night. <laughs> and, uh, he's thinking, oh, Sajid Mikado, maybe he'll have some food. And, kind of goes over there, then Sajid Mikado goes over there for some reason, which, the explanation of where he is is kind of non-voiding in this volume. It's just like, well, where did he go? What, did, I, did, did he just touch him and he gets up here? I, <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> but, um... I hope we see him, like, next volume, and figure out, oh, they just tied me up or something, or whatever, I don't know, but, uh, he notices that, uh, a vine grabbed onto his leg and kind of pulled him down, and he notices, uh, Kami Sato kind of standing there, in which, um, kind of introduces himself along with his two friends, uh, it was the, what was her name, um, crap, <laughs> is this why I don't, I'm not good with names, okay, it was Elza, and it was, uh, uh, Elza and, uh, El El Alza and Elza? Oh, no, no, Claire, Claire. It was Elza and Claire, okay. So, I don't know what, I think it's Elza, but I think Elza is the one that's kind of like Poison Ivy in a way. She's a gemstone, by the way. And, um, because her, her design is, like, with the flower. I thought that was pretty cool. That she has, like, big flowers on the side of her bangs, which is, I thought her design was cool, but, um, uh, it's all nerdy and stuff with glasses. But she's a gemstone. And she controls plants. But it's a little different than that. It's like she can get the plants to absorb stuff and they become what they absorb. It's a little weird. I, I, I like it. It's a good twist to it. But ultimately, you know, I mean, what freaking theory doesn't have a person that controls plants? I mean, I've been thinking that there should be a person controlling plants. But I thought it'd be a little different. But it's because it's like... It was like metal, those vines. So maybe it's like they just become whatever they absorb or something. Oh no, it's a little weird. Then again, gemstone powers are a little weird. And then we have Claire, who can take over anything like shoes, PSPs, Xbox One people. I'm just looking around my room and <laughs> seeing stuff, but uh, anything, anything. And uh, she's on the magic side. So, you know, Tomo's just kind of overwhelmed by this. These two people have, can do that much, so... And much of uh, those two kind of disappear in the darkness. There's a lot of disappearing in the darkness in this one. I don't know, I don't get that. There's, like, one of them on his side control darkness. Does she have... Does one of his girls have, like, that power Blackbeard has? I forget what fruit it was. From One Piece, the Dark Dark Nomi or something, I don't know. I forget the actual name of it, but, uh... Please forgive me if I got those, those two girls' names fixed up. But, uh, yeah, so, he kind of starts going in this monologue thing, which normally I wouldn't like, but it really does show what his character is and how crazy he is. So, he goes into this thing. Okay, we're talking about this. Okay, the meaning behind all this talking and stuff in this chapter. Because that's what, that's what the thing is here in this, that's the theme of this chapter. Okay, so, what Kamisato is saying is that he was, you know, a normal Husko boy. He but he didn't live in a county, he? he didn't live in Rome or Italy or wherever. He lived in a town. Just like Toma, for those of you who don't know Toma's background, he lived in a town. He didn't live in a county city or anywhere. He lived in a normal town. So he went to a school, you know, the Claire and El it was Claire and then there was his childhood friend. They didn't talk at all. You know, they just exchanged glances and just kinda went out their daily business. As normal high school kids do, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But, um... He kind of is mad at the magic gods for giving him this. Because he's... Okay, how should I say this? There's a lot of monologue in this. Uh... He's... 
mad at the fact that he got power and people recognize him differently. You know, because it's like before no one noticed him. He was just a kid. But now when he has these powers, he, people recognize him now. You know, he's done all this stuff and people, you know, look up on him. But he's mad at that because he wanted a normal life. He wanted, you know, he wanted all, he wanted to be normal, just normal kid, normal wife, normal, you know, everything and all that. Get married, all that stuff. In which, he got his war projector like two days early. Volume wise, I'm pretty sure that's the way early. But, yeah, he just had it for two days and he wiped out all the magic stuff. So that kind of freaks out Toma, like, oh my gosh, he only had it for like two days. And he managed to kill, basically kill the magic gods. You know, I mean, it's kind of frightening. I mean, Toma, I mean, he was pretty good with his power when he got it. I mean, I, when he was a, because he had it when he was a little kid. He didn't have it like Kamisato who got it like two days early. So, the theory is here that the magic gods were disappointed in Toma, or they had something in them that they were just kind of outputting, and which made War Rejector, and they placed it in him. Now, he thinks that it's like, oh, they gave me this thing where girls are just attracted to me, and made me this harem army, and all this stuff. And uh, I laughed at that, I really did. Uh, it took me a while to actually get this chapter. It took me a good five reads to really get the message there. But basically what this chap but this is all about to is the fact that Kamisado is was doing heroic things. He was saving these girls. You know, he thinks that, oh, if I save them without these powers, there's no way they would have you give him a crap about me to begin with or something. But, I mean, that's not really the case. But, I mean, it's like, if you have superpowers in a city or a town with no one in there, and you're just saying people, I'm pretty sure girls are going to think you're cute or something. You know, that's not common. You know, if I just got, if I have Superman powers, I go to New York, save a couple of people, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get noticed. But he's acting like it was the magic gods that were getting them noticed by, like, women and stuff. I don't know. I thought that was a little weird, but... He kind of, he kind of goes crazy a little bit. He's like crying his neck and he's like, rrr, rrr, like he's having his seizure talking or something. But you know, I mean, his way of thinking's good, I guess, for a villainish type character. I, I don't know, but he's basically just saying how he didn't want to be noticed. He didn't want to do all this. He wanted a normal life, like I said. He just wanted a plain old normal existence like everyone else but he never asked for this power he just got it he only noticed it a couple of days after he got it so it's just kind of he he just blames the magic gods for it you know he just blames them now is this true did they give Toma to his powers did they give Kamisato his powers I don't know I mean I could believe Kamisato getting his power from well Jared from magic gods but I don't know about Toma because his case is a little different but he's really just tearing into the thought that these girls didn't give a crap about me, you know, before this. Now they do. So it's just kind of, you know, he's saying how I'll use them, they're my cards, all this stuff. Saying how, you know, he's asking Toma, hey, did, did this happen to you? Did you get girls to like you like this? And all this stuff. And which, Toma's a little bit of a rare case here. Because it's not, the girl's kind of not really flutter to him or gather around him like Kamisato in case. I mean, it's like Fukiyose and Himegami and Teacher and Misika, I guess she's kind of. Index, yeah. Shokuho, kind of. Othinius, yeah. But I mean, it's like he hasn't he, he saved just the amount of equal of guys as he adds girls. He saved Accelerator. He saved Hamazura. He saved Aqua, kind of, I think. I don't remember which that ch chapter he's done read it, but, uh, who else? Fiamma, kind of. <laughs> um, didn't save Terra, but, um, uh, yeah, uh, he saved this amount of equal girls and guys, you know, I mean, he's a different, you know, he's, and his part of dialogue's kind of interesting, too, because he's saying that you know, maybe you getting these powers was was a good thing. Coming son was just like, what are you talking about? This isn't good and all that. But Tom, what Tom is saying is, you getting these powers might have helped these girls, you know, talk to you. You know, maybe they wanted to talk to you. You know, did you ever think, if you got out of your dumb, gothic, 
phase of not talking to anyone, you know, maybe <laughs> that's not it. But, uh, he's saying how the girls probably wouldn't have wanted to talk to him, but they just couldn't find the strength. And maybe you getting these powers, you doing these actions, you doing these things would get them to come closer to you and talk to you and do all this stuff with you. And when come, he's like, he, 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 he just reflects it. He's just like, no, you dumb, stupid idiot. That's not what, <laughs> what this is. I oh, don't know. I just thought it was a little weird. Him just saying, no, you dumb idiot. That, that's not all they're, what they're doing. That's basically what he's saying. And he's kind of saying how even though if I had these power, if I had just this power, do you think they really would have talked to me and all? He's like, come on. just like, yeah, I guess. I mean, <laughs> but, uh, it comes out does Tom, like, do you have a flutter of girls fluttering towards you and all that? Which, yeah, I guess Tom, like, kind of does to an extent, like, two, I think, three, well, four, four, I think, the only ones that actually gather around him, but, um, not as bad as coming style, but, I mean, it's like, did he ever think that maybe it's just, like, he he only gets girls because he saved girls? I mean, I could be wrong, maybe Tom was a different case, but, I mean, it's, I don't know, I thought it was kind of weird, but they kind of just argue back and forth, and, you know, I mean, he kind of just does this epic evil thing where it's like, I jump up on this plant, and you see all my girls, there's like a girl in a magic, ma magic continent outfit, and one in like a samurai outfit, which, there's a lot of different ones, I'm not gonna tell all of them, but... That kind of disappear in the darkness. I thought that was funny. I was picturing that in my head, like a whole group of them just going back into the darkness or something. To which Toba kind of thinks about this, and it's just like, dude, he kind of realizes himself that maybe the reason why people look at us differently if we were, you know, normal high school kids was because that we're heroes. You know, we do heroic things. We're gonna get noticed more. You know, that's pretty much how it works. Which is pretty much where the chapter ends. But you also got an interesting bit uh, from Toma, I forgot this, uh, where he says that, you know, people expect a lot from me, you know, and I'm just a kid, but they don't expect a lot from me because of my arm. He doesn't feel like they expect a lot from me because of my personality. They expect me a lot because I'm saying people. I do this. I do that. Which Toma said I kind of just knocks off again. So, I mean, this really kind of defines how each of them are different in a way. I like this chapter. It was really, really, really conflicting. Where action we get from the next chapter... But I really did like this chapter a lot. It was really just conflicting and just showing all these emotions from these different characters and all that. So, yeah, I mean, I'll give my opinion about this by the end of this chapter. So, yeah, I mean, it's joy. I enjoyed this. I really did. It was just kind of interesting. Kind of gave you some perspective between Toma and Kamisato. So, I will see you guys on chapter four. I hope you guys like this, so I hope I didn't forget anything either, so check you later.